right, so I'll do it. All right. So welcome back to Big Talk from Small Libraries. I am Krista Porter, your host here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Um, and it is 10 a.m. Central Time now. Our next uh, topic, our next presenter is Barbara Friedman. Good morning, Barbara. Good morning. And she is the Library Director at Irving Public Library in Irving, Massachusetts. Uh, population served 1,776 at last count, correct? Correct, 1777. Yeah. And um, she is going to talk this morning about teaching iPad and iPhone to seniors. Um, I know this is something that um, my own mother has gotten. She is all about her eye everything. <laughs> uh, so I'm just going to hand it over to you, Barbara, to take it away and tell us about what you've been doing there. Great. Um, well, welcome. And uh, I am uh, thrilled to have so many attendees. Um, I, I'm the library director at the Irving Public Library. Um, and as Krista said, uh, 1776 is a population. We're building a new library. Uh, we're excited about um, so many things uh, changing in small libraries. Uh, we're going from a very small library uh, of 1,800 square feet to 8,000 square feet. Um, but our mission really is to teach people and, and share things in the community. Um, and so I've done uh, these classes about teaching iPhone and iPad to uh, seniors at the Senior Center, and I've been very fortunate to be able to teach them at a university that's nearby. Uh, we're, we are in a rural area. There are very few Apple stores, um, and uh, so uh, this, is, this is an opportunity for seniors to really get to know the technology, um, and in and many seniors are getting their technology from sons, daughters, uh, relatives, um, and they want to know how to how to how to use these things. Um, but I have had people come to the class with a flip phone or no phone at all. So um, it, uh, it's a during this hour. On my slides, it says an outline of five 90-minute classes. Um, I'm going to give you 20 apps every senior should know and some really practical advice. So why do I teach seniors? Um, I've been doing tech for 50 years. My first uh, uh, computer class was in 1969. Um, I like logic. I like my iPhone. I love my iPhone. Um, I made my kids buy me an iPad, and as I said, there are no Apple stores nearby. So um, I, I feel that there's a need uh, that I, as a senior, can share with people. But even if you're not a senior, I think you can do this. Um, I will break for questions, and, and I, I've used this the slide presentation in, in other settings, so uh, that's why I have this slide. But I know Krista will... Um, uh, allow you to ask questions. So please feel free uh, at any time to jump in with your questions. And um, this is this is a fun topic for me, and I hope it's a fun topic for you. Absolutely, yes. So why do the, you need? Why do seniors need a smart device? Uh, they need to keep in touch with family. They need to know how to text. They need to share photos. They need to use the phone. They need to do FaceTime, especially if they have grandchildren at home. Uh, and they need to know how to email. And the simple things that many of you have done for years and years are real challenges for seniors. Things like attaching uh, uh, something to an email and sending it, attaching a photo to an email um, is a skill that seems so easy to most of us, but is, is not for some seniors. Um, seniors that use this technology now are, and I have to do something to my slide here, just, there we go. Okay, um, now I see my, my myself here and I got to get rid of that. Seniors that use this technology in their 60s and 70s will be able to use it when mobility fails them in their 80s and 90s. I wake up every morning saying, Alexa, tell me what time it is. I go to sleep every night saying, Alexa, 
would you set the alarm for six o'clock in the morning or seven or on weekends 10? Um, it, it's something that as as we lose mobility, we will we will love this this technology more and more. And, I, and so every senior should be able to um, use an iPhone or iPad or some other device. When seniors are learning something, they have uh, an issue with not getting the first part of the instructions. So just pick your, picture yourself going someplace and not knowing how you got to the place, just somebody telling you, okay, we'll just continue on Jeff Jefferson Boulevard to your destination. But you, you have no idea where Jefferson Boulevard are is. So that's how a senior feels when they don't know how to use the technology, but somebody just says to them, well, that's easy. Just press this, this, and this. And usually it is someone that um, is um, younger. <laughs> so why do I limit it to iPad, iPhone? Um, I started teaching this um, as a class where just bring your device. And I ended up having every everybody have a different device. And so there was very little learning going on because we were there was no overlap between the devices. So uh, you might decide that you want to teach Android or, or, or some other um, way of limiting uh, what you can teach in in a short time. Um, I because I have an iPhone, um, I, I prefer that and I have a good time with it, but uh, uh, definitely don't limit yourself. I often have people that come with an Android to class um, and at the senior center, um, I will let anybody bring anything. And I also do Tech Tuesdays where um, they can come to the library and just come and ask me a question. So I set aside two hours a week now. Um, some some Tuesdays, nobody comes. Um, and I know next week, one lady's gonna come and ask which computer she should buy. So I encourage you definitely to um, offer some kind of tech in your library. Um, so why would you wanna teach? There definitely is a, is a patron need. I think I've expressed that already to you a few times. It's time consuming to answer these questions at the reference desk. So you've got somebody waiting and somebody's asking a really detailed question. This way you can say, oh, come on Tuesdays or, or come to my class. I'm, I'm doing a, a few sessions on this, that, or the other thing. Um, and it promotes the library as tech smart a vital community service and brings in non-traditional users. And um, basically it makes you look good. In order to teach, of course, you're gonna have to have an Apple device or if you decide another device, um, you need a projector, a screen, a computer, or what I found in um, some of the senior centers if they have a smart television and an Apple TV, that works really well. Um, I have an Apple TV, so I can plug it into a smart television if they don't have an Apple TV. And that allows the students to actually see the screen, um, which works re uh, really well because as you are changing your screen, they're changing their screen and they can see how to do it. Um, and um, an open, reliable Wi-Fi connection. That seems obvious, um, but at the university that I taught, the first class I taught, they didn't open the entire uh, internet to me. And so my students could not download anything and I had to continually tell them, uh, you're gonna go home and download. This was about five years ago when I started to teach this, I've, I've learned my lesson the hard way. Um, what else do you need? Uh, you need, of course, some experience using whatever technology you're teaching. So iPads, iPhones. You need a lot of flexibility because every class is gonna be different and that's what makes it really fun for you and for the students. 
and you need some patience because seniors learn different, especially if, you, if you're older, you might have no, no problem being slow and methodical. If you're a little younger, you might have to slow it down a little bit. So I do know some things about using the iPhone and iPads. Um, I've used them probably for about 10 years now, but I don't know everything and everything changes. I teach it anyway. I always learn something. So don't let the, uh, your feeling of, oh, I don't know everything about this, so I can't teach it. I'm sure you can teach some things. All, all of you do technology. Um, the biggest insult um, I get is if I can't answer the question, somebody will always say this, no worries. If you, if, you, if you don't know how to answer it, I'll ask my 13-year-old grandson. Um, if you are a senior yourself, and especially if you are female, your class may have little confidence that you know anything about phones, tablets, or computing. And yet, many of us in libraries have been doing this for the last 50 years. So, so you got to build a little confidence, and I'll tell you what I do. So first of all, remember why they're saying this. They're proud of their grandkids. Uh, they watch them play endless games and they figure they must have learned something, right? Um, so I'm working at these responses. I'm smiling, I'm biting my tongue. I tell them they have great grandkids and I ask them to bring the solution to the next class. And then I do my homework and I bring the solution to the next class. So, um, and usually they don't bring the solution to the next class because what they want to learn is really not what their grandkids know. So, and do wow them with a few tricks. The best, um, the best trick um, is to save what's on your screen by clicking the two buttons. And can I, can I show people that? Let's see. Can I get back to, can you see? Oh, you can be able to, yeah, if um, you can in the GoToWebinar, if you, where it says we went to show screen, you can stop showing. You can, um, well, actually, you can just close your slides or minimize your slides and go to your screen if you want to. OK. Um, well, I'm not uh, show screen. Stop showing screen. Stop showing. Well, no, you don't want to do that because you want to still see your slides. But I'm just saying, just your PowerPoint itself, if you wanted to, you can um, stop using your PowerPoint and show oh. your screen. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Do whatever you want to show, you know, taking a screenshot of what you were talking about. Okay, um, I'm not actually seeing this, but I guess you guys can see this, right? Um, yes. You know, it's, it's, it, you probably all know this, but just doing that and clicking your screen and saving it in your pictures um, is a miracle to some seniors. Um, and those kinds of easy tricks to get them Oh wow! I know. You know, I've I've learned something in the first five minutes of the class, um, and and I think that really gets people's attention. And um, I've got a few other ideas, so I'm going to go back to yeah, go back to the slideshow then to get your screens full, your slides full screen there. Okay, are we good? Good. There you okay. Go. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Um, and let me just go one slide up. Sorry for that. I do that. Well, um, let me just go back a minute. Okay. Um, let's let's go through this though. Um, so, the uh, what I spend a lot of time doing um, is is going through the first classes and talking about touch, speaking, swiping, clicking, and double clicking. And these are things that if you've used technology for a long time, you don't even think about. Um, seniors uh, that are new to technology 
uh, think of touching the screen as if they were touching a manual typewriter. And um, there are three or four different touches that we that we use when we use uh, this type of screen technology. So they tend, first of all, to press too hard, press too long, um, and 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 as you know. Um, that will have a different result. So going through this, taking the time to go through the touch and how you speak, um, where, how, how do you get Siri to come up? Um, swiping, swipe left, swipe left, click, double clip, click, you know, all of those things are brand new. So you might even spend a first class or at least half of that class just going through some of these things to make sure everybody's on the same page. Um, but don't underestimate seniors. They may not knew, know this technology, but they've got a lot of life experiences that they're bringing to the class. And that's what's gonna make your class interesting. So we keep moving forward, opening up new doors and doing new things because we're curious and curiosity keeps leading us down these new paths. So don't, no matter where your class starts, um, it's gonna end up in a really interesting place. Um, I have a little video. I don't know if, um, do you think I can show this? Let's see. No, no. Um, you should be able to, is that on, is that there a link that you can click on in your slides? I should be able to, yeah, um, I think it's going to go. Let's see if, let's see if it'll do. I, I usually show this to the class just, just for fun. And it's one that if you're going to do this, it, it just breaks up a little nervousness. Let's, let's just see if it will says it's processing and it might have an ad or something. But it's one you might have a little fun with. Oh yeah, here we go. Let's see if we can start this. The, uh, Sag mal, Papa, habe ich dich noch gar nicht gefragt. Wie kommst du eigentlich mit dem neuen iPad zurecht, was wir dir zum Geburtstag geschenkt haben? Na gut. Bei den ganzen Apps kommst du klar? Was denn für Apps? Geh mal bitte die Schritt zur Seite. So the look is priceless, isn't it? Uh, yes. <laughs> um, uh, and and so, uh, but really, don't. By this time, uh, really, few few seniors will will do anything quite like that. But it does break up the class. It's a good one just to show people. It's called Grandpa. How do you like your birthday iPad? Um, oh, and okay. Don't uh, here. Here's my mistakes. Limit the size of the class. Hang on, hang on. We're getting a little <laughs> interference <laughs> here. Yeah, you see to close those tabs there so it doesn't yeah, keep there we there go. go. And we're going to come back to you right away. Sorry for that interruption. Um, uh, so don't bite off more than you can chew. Limit your size, uh, customize it to your audience and um, minimize. You're, you're going to be too ambitious. Every class I teach, I, I am too ambitious. And then I keep on breaking it down to whoever I have in the class. So don't feel badly if you don't get to everything. So I limit the size to 12 or less, and it's even better if there's eight. Um, seniors like to talk and to share. Um, and that is the fun of the class. So, um, um, as soon as you develop your um, syllabus, um, just throw it out the window after you meet your first class. Um, we learn from others. Um, internet speed is important. As I said, I did, I did have some issues with internet speed. If you're going to a new place, a new senior center, uh, you might have, have some issues there. Make it fun. Less is more. Um, adults want to learn what's useful to them. So um, 
start with a simple outline, modify it often, ask the class what they want to learn, and find that that pace that's really right for your class. Um, and remember, you don't have to teach everything because it's not about you, it's about them. Here's, here's the things that people want to know. Uh, they want to be able to check their bank account, but they're afraid to check their bank account. Um, and you have to talk about security. They want to do online shopping. Uh, but they, some of them don't quite get how that works and they're afraid to put their credit cards in there. Um, uh, stores, of course, um, I, I always have a few stores on mine and I show them um, how to use it. Uh, uh, showing them how they can, if they are still uh, want to have uh, physical pictures. A lot of us have given up all those photo albums, but if they still want to do that, uh, show them how to use uh, the, the Kodak site or the CVS site or, or one of the others so that they can take the, uh, take the photo from, from, from their uh, stream and they can uh, just walk to the whatever store they choose and they can pick them up right away because they've already done that through their phones. Um, airlines, um, biggest thing, book it, have your pass ready. Uh, they'll feel confident going through that line at the airport with their phone out instead of having to produce a paper copy of, of their ticket. Um, Dunkin' Donuts, lots of free stuff. Dun McDonald's. Um, health app. I just loaded on the, the new health app from, from my clinic, which um, keeps on changing. Uh, but I, I noticed that they pooled all of the information together so I can, I can check my cholesterol from 2011 all the way up to, to today. So um, th that's a really important thing for seniors. Um, walking you know that it'll tell you how many steps, um, games. Um, I play Scrabble every day. Um, there Usually there are one or two people in the group that will volunteer which great game they're playing and then others can join in and see how that works. That's a fun thing to do. Um, transportation, um, so wonderful. Uh, to, um, I'm in Massachusetts and um, I can take the train from, from uh, my area. Um, I can see the schedule. I can book the ticket. Um, I don't even have to show the phone to the conductor. Um, it, as soon as I get on, on the train, it automatically clicks on. Um, these kinds of things will be very helpful to seniors. Um, and how to connect to devices. Uh, how, how do they connect their um, uh, light switches, um, Alexa, things like that. Um, that's a great thing to oh, show them. I don't know that one. Oh, my Alexa, did you just hear her? She just, she just, uh, <laughs> um, Okay. Uh, that's actually funny, Barbara, I have to say, someone did comment earlier when you were talking about having your Alexa set your alarm, that their Alexa just set their alarm for 10 a.m. Yes, I, it's, it's, <laughs> well, I, you know, um, I think that seniors that don't have this technology are feeling really out of it and lost and so I know our senior center has, has an echo and, um, and so, they're getting comfortable with it, but um, you know, there's still those people that uh, for some reason got through life without too much technology in their jobs and they still have that fear. It's, it's a great, great to get, the, the li a library is a perfect place to share this, you know. Um, okay, and uh, the, uh, so for students, um, I, I made a mistake in my last class. I got too confident in 
teaching this class over and over and I really do want the students to have their hands on their device. Um, so of course they have to have an iPad or an iPhone for my class. They have to know the Apple ID and password. And, and when some people get the technology from a relative, they often don't get the the Apple ID and password, or they have a hard time changing it over. So uh, some of them end up going to an Apple store, calling tech and, and doing that because that's something I can't do. So if you are getting a class together, it's a good idea to put that in, in your description. You know, we're teaching a class at the library, bring your iPhone, iPad, but make sure you also bring your Apple ID and password uh, because otherwise they won't be able to download anything. Library card, um, because that's the reason I originally taught this. I found that there's so many people that actually didn't use the things that they could use from the library. They couldn't down, download an audiobook, an ebook. They couldn't stream a video because they had no concept of, of how to do that. Um, even though we gave out handouts, you know, they ju just couldn't get there. So uh, having them bring a library card and going through that and showing them your digital services is really great for great for libraries, great for them. Um, and I see my side has slide, the last thing on that slide has some strange word over there. Um, and, but my, um, it's, the point is, are handouts really necessary? The last class I taught, I did not hand out any, any, anything at all. Um, it was totally hands-on. And then when I got the feedback, um, I, I got uh, people that really wanted some handouts. So decide what you want to do. Okay, so again, this is just about handouts. People people can refer back to their notes. Uh, handouts can keep the class on track. The cons are seniors who take notes never put their hands on their device. And um, I, I had one one lady who came in without a device. Um, this was her first class. It was at a senior center. Um, she really wanted to know about uh, whether she should buy an iPhone or not. And she sat there and she took note and note and note and note. The next class, class two, she came in with a brand new iPhone. Um, she knew how to turn it on. Uh, she was the most enthusiastic student I've ever had. And by the end of the fifth class, she she really, really was enjoying it. So um, if, if people don't have an iPhone, uh, but they want to learn about it, you might you know, encourage them just to sit through the class. It, it, it can be helpful. Um, and of course, you know, uh, you probably know there's an app for that. You can show them that they, they can take notes on their phone if they want to. So um, here's one of the reasons, another reasons why you might want to do handouts. Um, these are really familiar symbols to us. Um, you know where to click, what's going to happen when you click there. But you know what this looks like to a senior? That's what it looks like. It, it's strange. What are those symbols? What do those symbols mean? So there are at least 50 symbols to learn. And there's no way you would ever get through doing going through all of these symbols in your class. Um, but just to you know, pick a few that you're going to concentrate on. And uh, if you give out a handout, uh, this is probably the kind of handout you want to give. So they can keep on referring back to what, what does that symbol do? If I press it, what's going to happen? Here's some of my smiling faces. And um, Notice the um, notice this this one class where where one lady is helping another lady. That has really been truly wonderful to see the interaction uh, between 
people that have learned a little bit and they want to show the other person how how to how to do it. Um, these people are working very hard on this, and um, I, uh, the other lady was from a a, a different senior class, and and she um, she again was. Um, starting really from scratch and uh, leaving with uh, uh, quite a bit of comfort. I, I, do we have any questions? Should we? I've been rambling on for quite a while. Uh, let's see. Oh, OK. Yes, um, we do. Um, the, the image of the list of icons, do you have a source of where you got that from? Or is that a drone and out where it like uh, I stole it from some place, um, <laughs> and um, so I, you know, if you if you put just i iPhone icons uh, in the internet, you'll you'll get something similar, and you can choose which one you want to use. There's lots of other, yeah. And someone did ask about. Um, she said, "Thank you. That helps. Great." Yeah, basically, yeah, look for one. And there's going to be lots of different ones out there, depending on what you're trying to teach. You might want something that looks a little different, potentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and you might, might that that was a list of 50. If, if you really feel that you can find a list that's maybe 10 uh, to start with, it's probably a, a good way to go. Um, it's really... It can be overwhelming. Um, and and uh, just look at the, you know, what I have on the screen. Um, the gentleman in the back, and I don't, I don't, I don't remember the gentleman's name, and I don't want to point him out. Um, but I, I, I want you to tell, <laughs> want to tell the story of <clears throat> what made a difference in his life. So he's, he's. He's working very hard. He's he's doing very well. He understands a lot of the concepts and why he wants to do this, but he is having very a great difficulty seeing what's on the screen. And <clears throat> so I looked at his screen because I do go around the class and look at the screen, and I realized that he didn't know how to adjust the brightness on his screen. So all I did was flip up and um, brighten his screen, it was like a miracle. It was, wow! You know, so um, definitely this, because this is a hands-on class, you really want to see what they're seeing on the screen. And um, um, that that one little um, gentleman taught me that um, there, you know, every individual needs, needs uh, individual attention. Uh, so, so think of, Think of them all as, as very different. Okay, this is my class outline. Um, so if you are thinking of doing the class, I'm gonna run through these fairly quickly. Um, just what I do, um, introduce myself to the students and let them introduce themselves to each other. And that's that seems to be the key key in these senior classes, they they work off of each other. Uh, you're, you're just kind of a, a, a facilitator. Don't, don't think of yourself so much as, as a, a teacher, uh, but more of a facilitator. And ask them why they're taking the class, because then those things that they want to know will pop up to the, the beginning of the class, and they'll feel more satisfied with uh, getting something out of the class. And um, the, what I usually do the very first thing is I take a photo of the class and then I instantly project it on the screen, um, which shows the technology of how iPhones work and how iCloud works. So a log in to your iCloud um, so that they can see that not only is the image on their phone, but it's also on any computer in the entire world that they happen to log into with their I, iCloud uh, account. And that can be a miracle. can also be scary because um, their information is worldwide. So uh, starting from the beginning, I had one gentleman who came in and he had that iPad in a box and we took it out and took the shrink wrap off. Um, so you have to, you know, some 
it might be showing them where the start button is, the home button is, and then, then you might have somebody who's been using an iPhone for, for years and just really wants a little more comfort level. So um, you've got to, it's hard to juggle the different um, levels. Um, phone uh, is the absolute number one reason why people want to use their their uh, take a class on, on iPhones. Um, and uh, but sometimes they don't know what these things do. So the show them the selfie button. That's always fun. Everybody hates it because everybody looks so ugly. And um, but they need to know how to put the flash on, how to make it a video. And th the simple things that I remember finding difficult for me, um, I other people find difficult too. I mean, it took me forever to realize that the, the video um, happened when you slid against the bottom half of the, um, the screen in, instead of poking it. Um, so I, I've learned the hard way. Um, so as I say, photos are the most popular. So take some time to do that. Uh, take some time to take photos, delete photos, take videos, delete videos, um, have the class take a selfie and delete the selfie. Um, and sometimes if it's a, if it is a a good selfie, they might want to send it to their son, daughter, or something like that. And that's always fun to, to watch how, how cool that is for them to get a text back saying, oh, mom, you took a selfie. Wow. Um, so photos are these, these two icons. Start with those because that will be the, the way to go and get people interested. Um, I hand out a survey um, at the beginning. Uh, you can use this survey, make up your own, own but it is a good way to start uh, because uh, although they might come in wanting to know how to, how to FaceTime their grandchild, um, there's so many different things that they might want to know. And, um, and this way you can concentrate on those things instead of just the things you might think are important. Um, you'll concentrate on the 10 most important things that everybody wants to know. And that makes the class a little more concise. Uh, I can spend the entire first class on this. Um, and that is just flipping up from the bottom of the phone. Um, this is a great way of showing them airplane mode, their cell phone connectivity, their um, Wi-Fi connection, Bluetooth connection, how you get that um, screen to stay in one place instead of flipping back and forth the lock screen, um, the night and day um, uh, uh, feature. Um, some of these icons are not on the standard screen. They're things that I have put on in notifications. So um, you can also show how to add things and subtract things if you want to. Um, just knowing that their phone is also an alarm clock, it's also a flashlight, um, it's an emergency uh, um, phone, um, they can write with it, they can uh, uh, they can um, make a little audio recording of themselves. They can connect it to their car. Uh, all of those things um, are can be discussed from this very first screen where you just flip up from the bottom. So, and this is a list of, of all of those things that I just talked about. So that's class number one. Um, and connecting to the internet. Um, so um, I just had a lady in the library talking about um, she wants a computer for herself. She doesn't have internet at home. I said uh, she wants a laptop. Um, so we were discussing, you know, what she's going to buy. And then I said, but you can bring the laptop anytime and, and just connect it to the internet in the, in the library. You know, it's, it's mobile. And she said, but I don't know how to connect to the internet. And so the simple uh, uh, 
the method of going to settings, showing them exactly how they can connect to the internet, whether they're in Applebee's or Panera or wherever they're going or to their family's home. Um, that can save them the cell phone service. And that's um, definitely something you have to deal with in the first session. So and that, again, a screen just showing that. I often give them homework to take and delete the photo, which I told you about before. Um, it's very helpful uh, for you to set up the icons that you want to deal with on your first screen and ask them to uh, show them how to move icons and then set up the screen on the first day so that you all have the same screen to start with. So you're only gonna deal with, with these icons uh, during the class and not the other 52 that you happen to have on, on your device. So. And I see we're, we're getting close to the end of the time. So um, I, I can go through this quickly or I can take questions. Um, well, I do have a couple of questions. We'll get those done right now while we're um, while we can. Um, if anybody does have anything they want to ask Barbara, please do type it into your um, go to webinar questions section. Um, one person just has a comment, and it's related to when you're talking about. I think that picture with people helping um, people. When I worked at the reference desk, I had a fellow that was probably in his early 90s, and he would ask me computer questions. He was a really sharp individual, but every time I'd show him something, he'd say, you win the Golden Halo Award for the day, because he was <laughs> so appreciative of what I would show him. Hmm. I think that's what, yeah, that they, like you were saying, been saying throughout this whole you know, presentation, they really want to know this stuff. They want to learn. That's what, you know, it's, it's new to them, just like it was new to us at some point, those of us that use it regularly, but yeah. Yeah, it, it really, and it can't, and because it can be so useful, um, because I I have friends that are having knee surgery, I have friends, and, and having devices that, that will help you. I mean, you know, it's, it's the um, extended clapper, you know, you all remember the, the clapper commercials, and, uh, and this does so much more, you know, so. Um, Anyway. And if someone does have a question about their biggest challenge, mm -hmm. then my biggest challenge is non-techie patrons of any age who, number one, think they can't learn it, and number two, are afraid of technology and worry that they are going to break the computer or tablet or phone. Yes, uh, and uh, you know, this is not a new problem. I, I, you're, I remember 20 years ago, the. Um, some of the people that happened to have a job where they had to be trained in the computer um, still have that fear because computers used to be a lot iffier about its stability in the in the 80s, you know, and that's that's when that fear came and they never touched anything since. Um, the one on one is is the way to to do that, and um, if if you have the time and the inclination to sit down with um, with seniors one on one, um, they can get over a lot of those fears, and that's the only way I've I've managed to do that. Uh -huh. so. And and then people in the class that do have that, I I did have a lady last last class that. Um, uh, she, uh, she she didn't actually want to do anything hands on. She she wanted to just kind of audit the class, and that was okay. Uh, but I noticed by the by the fifth class, she was using her her device. So everybody learns a little differently, um, and um, yeah, it just it just takes time. It just takes time. Keep on reassuring them. You can do this. Okay. Um, so I think we have four more minutes and I'm oh, going to, yeah, go ahead. Um, I'll go through this. Um, so, um, and uh, repetition, repetition, repetition. Um, 
and uh, showing what apps do. So um, and this is uh, something that if, if you, because I allow people to have an iPhone or an iPad at some point, you're gonna have to show them the difference. Um, so of course you can't do a tele, you can't make a phone call from a, a from an iPad exactly the same way, but you can do a message and you can do FaceTime. Um, so that's the big difference. And, um, and of course there are, are others, but you might want to take some time doing that. Um, and again, uh, to put, put the apps on your front screen there with, all, with the apps that you're going to be doing and encourage them to move all of those apps onto their first screen. Um, that can take, um, that can take half of a class just getting them to know how to move their their icons back and forth. Um, so sometimes that's a good thing to start towards the end of class and then ask them to work on it at home. Um, and then the, the next 20 apps that you decide to show them, you're going to you're going to do that totally um, according to who you have in the class. It'll be very, very different for every class you teach. Google Maps, Maps is one of my favorites. Um, Skype, Pandora, Google Maps, Kindle, uh, Your Library's Catalog, Libby, YouTube, Hoopla, and Freego. I would not, uh, I would not skip any of those. Uh, except for Hoopla and Freegal if your library doesn't subscribe to those. Um, but in, in Massachusetts, uh, we do have, Libby is a, a regionally contracted service, so that is Overlook. And so every library has that. Um, individual libraries subscribe to Hoopla, especially for streaming videos, um, and Freegal is the music. Um, so our even our little library, uh, we subscribe to both of those. And email, big. Um, calendar, huge thing to learn. Uh, so complicated, but so useful. Reminders for seniors, wonderful. You know, it's gonna ring and remind them that they have a, an appointment. Um, and so going class three, going through calendar, finding directions, how to use YouTube, um, how to find their iPhone if they lose it, um, how to read a book and watch a movie, all wonderful things. If you can squeeze that into class three, you're doing really, really well. Class four would be online catalogs, um, finding things in the catalog, um, uh, doing games and uh, streaming videos and how to use their library account. Uh, and that is the reason I started to do this. I wanted everybody to know how to use their library account and use the online catalog. So, and uh, again, if, if you get to class five and still have time, then go through these services that your library happens to subscribe to. So they may be different than what we, we subscribe to, but um, Hoopla, and uh, Freegal, and and then um, if you still have time, teaching them uh, that now they have control of their television sets. If they have a Fire Stick, Apple TV, uh, or an HDMI connection, and they also have control of their Echo, Echo Dot, or Google device, whatever they happen to, any smart speaker they have, and those are the miracles of of today. So, um, and there's always more to learn. So tell them that they should go to the library and pick up a book. Um, and YouTube, uh, of course, is great. And, and, and I think I've gotten to, I'm, I'm not going to show you those, but I am going to tell you that, um, just to wrap this up, one of the, um, uh, things that I've been able to do is to teach at places that are not in the town that I am the uh, library director. Um, and, and, and you get paid for doing this, uh, which if you are a part-time librarian or have 
um, extra time in your life, uh, you might offer this service to either senior university programs or senior center programs. Everybody's looking for this kind of skill and um, most librarians do have this skill. So uh, some extra pocket money uh, in, in case uh, you're looking for that. So um, seniors are eager students. Please enjoy teaching them how to do this. Thank you. All right, great. Thank you, Barbara. Uh, we do have a few questions that came in, and I think I'm just going to take a minute or two to grab um, a couple of them here. Um, a question about internet safety. Do you work internet safety into any of your classes? For example, elderly people being scammed into sharing their um, credit card information or giving up power of attorney or something like that. It always comes up, um, and it, it and and so um, it's always a topic of, of discussion at some point. Um, Google, if you have gone to any of the conferences and um, seen the Google booth, um, I know uh, last year at ALA they were giving out um, a safety booklet uh, that you could use oh. as a um, you know, in a class, so um, you could write to Google and ask them for that if you if you intend to teach uh, such a class. It's already done for you. Great. Um, and then, what about privacy concerns um, when you're helping someone set up a new device? Um, how, is there any privacy concerns when you have their password, or do you just make them enter all of that and not give you the information? I never, yeah, I never put it in for them. Make they them enter themselves, yeah. They have to do it themselves and they have to know it themselves, yeah. Oftentimes it will take three classes until some people actually find that password, uh, know, you know, know what the Apple ID, know what their password and actually can get in. So they, you know, that there's great incentive because they see their the other people in the class doing things and they can't download anything. Um, so by the third class, if they're going to continue, you better believe they've asked somebody how to do that. Yes, um, they found it. Yeah. 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 Um, and then I don't know if you mentioned this couple of questions. Um, do you, are your classes free or do you charge for them? They, they chart the ones that I teach at the university, um, that's totally billed by the university. They send me a check at the end of the five weeks and, um, and that's great. Um, I, at senior centers, um, uh, for the, my local senior center, I've, I've done this free and in the library, of course, I've done that free um, because all of our programs are free. Um, at another senior center, uh, they decided that um, it was a very small group and they decided to, um, to charge the individuals who were taking the class $10 a class. So um, I think I had six six people the first class and four and then, you know, six, you know, so, so whatever it was, I got $10 who, from whoever showed up to the class. So, um, you yeah. know, it's, um, but for, for your own library, I can't imagine charging. Right. Mutually not. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay. I think we're going to have to wrap up for now. If anybody does have any other questions, you'll be able to reach out to Barbara later. Um, and uh, with um, our information. So thank you very much, Barbara. This is great. Well, I, I, more people I, I, I hope everybody does this. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Yeah.